All right, let's get back to coding. How about it? Okay, so we got to a point where we don't have any, we don't have any more errors here, um, but it's not quite what we want to have happen, right? We need to actually, in the case of a temporary failure, figure out where we need to resume from. We need to figure out when we need to resume. Um, we need to do this in a way that's going to help us support um, exponential back off as well on the resumption. Now, how are we going to do that? I think what we want to do, let's let's start by making making a function, and we'll call it like um, upload status. Uh, <laughs> we make it status of upload. I, I don't know. Uh, upload status is fine. I think that's not ambiguous here. It's not like we're have a status to upload. Anyway, uh, async function up, upload status. Not handler, um, and this is gonna return. It's gonna it's gonna take some things. Actually, this could be this could be kind of close, right? Because we we do need the request client. We need the upload URL, and we need the access token. Um, we we need to put to the upload URL. We need to send the authorization header. We need to put, but without a body, for the status mechanism. And then we're going to get a response and then uh, we're going to do some other stuff, but yeah, I figure out exactly how this is going to work. So what should upload status return is a question, right? Because we need to know, we need to know the, um, where we should resume from like the first byte that we should ask, um, Upload next, yeah. And we also need to know what, how long we should wait before we resume, maybe. Or upload status can wait itself, but then it's doing multiple things, right? Maybe it makes more sense for the, the thing that's calling this <laughs> to do that. But we do want upload status to return back a value because uh, as described here, it may, so when we, here's the example request, right? And this matches what we're doing here where we're not sending a body. Oh, but we are sending a content range. Set the content range header value to bytes space star slash content length. Okay. So we do need a content length uh, a, a file size, I think of what we called the other argument. So we'll call that, that, that here. Um, we'll pass that header content range bytes. Yep. There we go. It's like, it knows. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about the, how we're handling the response yet, because I don't know exactly what the shape of the, the value of this function should be. Uh, but I think there was a note here that API response, if it's already completed, it will return the same response that it sent when the upload originally completed, right? So if it succeeded, then it will return like a 200 something. If it failed, it'll give us a 400 or 500 or something that's not a success essentially. But if the status is 308, then we need to do something. So upload status can um, do a couple of things, right? It can it can either say continue from here. It can say everything is good now, or it can say give up. Now. That's, hmm, hmm. 
it's it's very similar. It's very similar to the existing upload status enum we have. Except we'll need to ship information back. Um, I wouldn't want to say change this enum to have <laughs> the different parts have like, oh, temporary failure. And then here's where you resume from. Uh, because we won't know that here. Uh, maybe what we should do is we should rena rename this enum to be like upload inner status <laughs> uh, for now. And, you know, something might occur to me. There we go. Uh, once we get a little further along. Right. And then what we'll have is we'll have another uh it's very unsatisfying right we can make another enum called upload status this one is still kind of inner <laughs> um mm, what if this is upload res no because uh, like the ultimate result is either going to be a success or a permanent failure any kind of temporary failure is internal to the this this ape like the the code that we're implementing now right so names are hard <laughs> hmm okay well i'm gonna do something and then we'll maybe come something will occur later that will be like oh this is a better name so, well, I still need an enum that is going to hold uh, an upload status. Uh, yeah. So if it's a temporary, if, it, if it's a temporary failure though, it's gonna have some stuff in it. Uh, it's gonna have. We can't. We can't label the values inside of the enum, can we? Um, so if it's a temporary failure, we need to know where we want to resume from. Actually, I said something. I don't know if it's actually true. Let's find out. So, uh, Rust Enum. How do you work? So yeah, you can do the thing we've done before. You can, um, yep, do that. You can give it can say it wraps a string like this. It'll have an associated string value. You can give it a bunch of values. You can have a like a map like thing. Okay, that's what I was looking for. Yeah, so start byte and um, and then uh, how long to wait? before making the next request is a thing. And that might be in like microseconds or something. I don't know. We'll, f we'll figure that out. The question is going to be how is upload status going to know how many times, right? If, if the intent here is that the logic for our exponential back off, is going to drive wait time. Oh, right. Okay, so about two minutes ago, maybe, I had a thought. <laughs> uh, here we go. And here's the part that I was looking for. If the API response also includes a retry after header, use that header's value to determine when to attempt to resume the upload. Okay, but it doesn't show retry after. Uh, presumably there's a defined semantic for what retry after means. It is either an HTTP date or seconds. One of the two. <laughs> Great. Okay. Um, so 
So we can use that, right? We can say, okay, well, we got a response and it had this header and we'll figure out what wait time is supposed to be. Um, and then if we don't have that though, we need to figure out how long we should wait. And the doc suggests exponential back off, which is a good, <laughs> a good default thing to be thinking about when you're talking about calling system external service, right? You want to um, maybe even like ex exponential back off with jitter uh, for um, calling APIs if they fail, retry, wait a little, uh, wait longer each time, and then significantly increase uh, in an exponential fashion, uh, fashion the amount of time you wait as the failures go on and on. Now, to to facilitate that, we need to know how many times we've retried. Uh, and that means upload status needs to know that. Upload status doesn't have any kind of internal state. Um, so what we're going to probably do is have an argument that is gonna be uh, something like uh, attempts maybe, attempts. And hopefully it fits in a, hey, Brainless. Ooh, I recognize that emote. It's a Adam versus everything uh, emote. <laughs> How's it going? Uh, I, I failed to spell attempts. <laughs> I failed in my attempt to spell attempts. It's T-M-P-T-S. You got a free sub, nice. I, I don't make a lot of his streams, uh, but I catch a, bits of his stuff on YouTube when I can. I was watching the um, uh, the edited version of the, the Sanguifage run and very tempted to play some more RimWorld uh, off stream myself yesterday. So while sleeping a lot during the weekend, yes. I generally prefer to, so I have my alarm clock set for work Monday through Friday, but I have it set on the weekends too, so I don't go off schedule. <laughs> you don't quite like the guy? Well, that's uh, to each their own. Um, so yeah, what I was saying though is hopefully the number of attempts will be, uh, <laughs> will fit into eight. Oh boy, what if it did? What if, what if we, um, what if it didn't fit into eight bits? It's unsigned, so we'd overflow back to zero. Uh, well, we're gonna have exponential back off, so I think that's gonna... Uh, okay, so we're gonna need a max attempts. <laughs> uh, yeah, we should instrument the... We'll instrument all the things. So let's, let's make a max attempts uh, const. There you go. Uh, maybe not five. Although, I don't know, we'll, we'll say 10 or something. The The point being to, to prevent overflow, it needs to be less than, it needs to, well, it needs to fit in a U8. But anyway, I've been watching uh, RimWorld streams lately. I was trying to see if I wanted the DLC and I think I actually don't. I mean, that's fair. It, um, there are stuff that, that are in the, there, there are things that are in the free update, right? So the DLC has like, the content that's around, you know, this kind of horror, like cosmic horror type, <laughs> like Lovecraftian uh, vibe, maybe. So if you if you're not interested in that kind of gameplay, maybe the DLC doesn't make sense. I don't really know everything that's in the DLC because uh, I <laughs> have been looking at a little bit of content and thinking about playing it a little bit more, but. Uh, yeah, haven't gotten that very, very far into it, past what was on the stream uh, Friday. Uh, so, I guess what we can say is, if attempts is greater than max attempts, yeah, we'll just return an error. Um, we are going to change this so that... Do we need one to return a result here? I think what we want to do is we want to return 
uh, an upload status, right? So it's either a success or a failure or it's a temporary failure, a permanent failure or a temporary failure. Um, so if attempts is greater than or equal to max attempts, then we, were, we're gonna, we want to return a permanent failure. Um, so having attempts means that we will be able to do our exponential back off. Um, so we'll do like two to the power of attempts plus some base amount. And I'm just gonna make some con constants here, I think, for like base wait time. Um, what is this value? <laughs> uh, if we're using a U64, maybe this is like milliseconds, microseconds? I don't know yet. We'll, we'll make it all m make sense when we wire it together. Um, so when we, we, we're gonna get the response and if we fail to get the, the status, right? This is what we're trying to do. We're gonna getting the, uh, get the upload status from the YouTube API. Um, and then if that fails, we're gonna trace the error. As well, just like grab the error here and also, there we go. And then we return a permanent error, permanent failure, if uh, if this doesn't work, right? If we can't even figure out what the status is, we're just gonna give up. Um, if the status response is, um, so there's a few different cases here. Yeah, there's a few different cases here. So if the, um, if it's if it's a success, so like a 200 series number, right? 200 to 299, then, then the upload was already successful. Um, if, uh, let's see, yeah, 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 If the response status is 308, hey, hey, then we do things. Uh, and these are kind of mutually exclusive here, right? So, yep. Uh, otherwise, this was a permanent failure. Right, so if it's if it's um, if it's a 200 something, <laughs> it's a success. If it's a 308, then we need to do some stuff. And otherwise, we're just gonna assume any other status code uh, is a permanent failure. All right. So now, what is this code that Copilot generated for us? We're trying to parse the range. Do I really need the else if? No. Right, because we do the return. Um, I mean, for that matter, I don't. I, I do, but what I can do is just change the structure of this code so I don't need the return. There. That seems maybe more idiomatic from what I've seen <laughs> elsewhere. Okay, so let's go back to the, the docs here somewhere. There we go. So, um, the response, okay, 308. Yep. And then it's going to have a range. And then we're going to get it as a string. Uh, okay. And then uh, if we didn't see the range header, then something is broken. <laughs> and we're going to just give up. And then we split the range. Um, that's interesting. That's not gonna quite work right. Right, that's gonna give us uh, bytes equals zero. Also, I don't want this dot expect here. That's gonna cause a panic if it can't parse it. This part seems nice. Uh, two to the power of attempts is used at 32. Sure. Um, this also doesn't handle the case where the retry after, uh, retry after header isn't present. Um, so let's do this. Let's get rid of that. Range split next. Nope. Um, 
press the rain chatter, which looks like, yep. <laughs> okay. You could, you could do that. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily do it that way though. We could do match. Sumerus also has left and right shift. Um, as in, uh, you mean like the, the bit operations? Ah, how would it look something like uh, two left shift, two attempts? Yeah, uh, is that a thing? Hold on, let's, let's see here. Uh, two. Uh, five. It it doesn't hate it. <laughs> so could you do something like um, this, and then sometimes that really I mean it's really cool where we get the the type inference or you know it figures out the types and then annotates it in line but I also really really dislike having stuff change the flow of the code that's being displayed out from under me <laughs> anyway uh, see now it went away and it'll come back Yeah, seems correct according to the web. <laughs> uh, yeah, so like, okay, and um, we Copilot gave us some code to also uh, do that. Yeah, yeah, okay, interesting. Uh, range split. So split returns. Oh, collect. We're missing a dot collect to get it back into a vector. No. Yeah, we can't. Uh, oh, here we go. Let's rewrite this. There we go. Type annotations needed, can add for a type of the type parameter be declared in the method, collect must be known. Consist yeah. Consider specifying the generic argument. Uh right. So we could do like that. Expect an array or slice found vec. Can I, hmm. I mean, this part is right. And then this part is wrong. No. Okay. It's a little confusing. Let's do this. So let's say um, uh, range parts. That bit. I could do IRL band for six times. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, -huh. uh, -huh. uh what, what we're talking about a channel point reward. IRL voice band. What what is uh I can't say anything for the next three minutes. Uh uh-huh, yeah. I just mute the microphone and keep talking. <laughs> mm. Something I need to do, actually I was thinking about this for the ads as well, is get like an on-screen timer. I don't have one of those set up. I need something that, um, 
Like I have a little web server actually for like the OBS screens. So I could make something in there um, for that. But that's how the countdown works on the, uh, the when I start the stream. I actually have, I have a, I have a, a web page. And then I actually have a, a thing inside of OBS that integrates with web, uh, WebSocket that actually can control the countdown. All right, so we have a VEC of STR. And then we want to, personally, I don't enjoy it when the stream shows the timer to an ad. It's not bad when it's a chat message though. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking more like for people that might stumble onto the stream and then I'm on a break because that would give people a sense of like when I'm gonna be back. So how are we getting, so we have range parts and then we want to get, um, let's start by equals match range parts that get one. Does that work? So get returns a reference to an element or subsize depending on the type of index. So it gets uh, the this <laughs> value in between the equal and the dash. Be a zero, one, two. And then that's gonna get us a a string reference. Is that really what we want to do here? No, I guess we do want we want a reference of a string. And that means start byte is a reference of a reference. Seems weird, but we parse it and we get back E64. So that's there's that. You see? Okay. <laughs> That was my thought process of why I was thinking of that. And then you also brought up the redeeming, redeeming of the channel points. And that would be another reason to have like a, an on-screen timer. Although it would, be, it would be a different kind of timer, right? We'd have a timer for, I'd have to do a special thing. No one's redeemed that yet, which I guess is a good thing. Uh, and then we're calculating wait time. Although what we need to do here is we need to look for that retry after header. Uh, so. What we're gonna do is we're gonna say wait time is going to be match. Yeah. So if there is a retry after header, we'll do that. Otherwise, we'll do the thing that we were originally going to do. Um, but here, I'm just going to kind of, uh, there we go. We're going to attempt to parse it. And if we can't parse it, Yeah, retry after is a date exactly. Uh, we don't want to we don't want to fail. We actually want to parse the date and do all that stuff. That's going to be fun. Um, assuming it is a time, we know it's seconds. Obviously, base wait time here is um, is not seconds. Maybe we want to take this value here and multiply it by a thousand. There we go. And we'll say it's um, milliseconds. <sighs> Which if we're gonna do that, then we really should say what it is. I mean, we should, we should anyway. <laughs> if it was seconds, we should say wait time seconds or something. But, um, Okay, this part we don't want to change. There we go. There we go. Looks good. So is this is this gonna work? So attempts will start with zero. 
So that'll be two. Uh, no, that'll be one. <laughs> two to the power of zero. Uh, wait, no. Right. This is not. This is not the same thing as the thing we have. This is not equivalent to what we had before. Right. If we left shift two, zero places, the value is two, right? But if we raise two to the power of attempts and t attempts is zero, then this value would be one. Uh, which is what I want, actually. we need to implement that won't that be fun one two attempt uh, yeah and then it goes two and then four and then yeah yeah that's true that's true I don't think it matters I think uh, I mean hmm do you think there's an optimization in the the, the uh, power method? Oh, I can't, I can't, I can't redo. Um, hold on. Dot pow. Can we can we just go to the definition of that? We cannot. <laughs> do, you, do you think it's uh, smart? Well, that's the thing is that we have this thing called a compiler. Um, and then, uh, what is the thing under that takes the intermediate representation and it, um, I don't even remember anymore, but so the issue I have here is two things. One, the compiler might actually like figure that out anyway. And, um, I think saying power makes it much clearer what's going on. Yeah, uh, except this needs to be the right width. The real answer, right, is we would benchmark <laughs> if it mattered. But here's the thing, who does it matter that, because like the whole point of this is to figure out how long we're waiting. So we are literally not in a rush. <laughs> um, but even if we did care about performance here, the real answer is to benchmark it, right? To figure out what uh, is going to be actually faster in practice. Um, or just look at the generated. Um, I guess you could like compile the whole thing and then decompile back to assembly and look at what, what is generating. I don't know if there's a way to get at, I mean, surely there's a way to see the generated assembly without having to go to by code and back, but anyway. All right, so this is gonna try to, Copilot's great. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna try to use uh, chrono date time uh, parse from RFC 2822. Uh, um, hold on, what is this doing? Okay, so then if we fail to parse it, then we return, hold on, there we go. Match, uh, right. Okay. Um, this is wrong. Wait time, timestamp millis is a U64, right? Uh, it's an I64, but it's close enough. And then if there's an error, then we want to, what, what's the problem here? Match arms have incompatible types. Expected U64 and found unit. Where? Hmm. 
match okay error. If it's an okay, then this. If it's an error, then this. Uh, oh, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, we could return wait time, but the issue is that we weren't returning a value inside of this match. All right. And then uh, one is I64 and the other is a U64. You can convert a U64 to an I64 and panic if this converted value doesn't fit. We could do that. Um, can we do that? We can do that. And then we don't actually care about the error. Um, underscore that yeah there we go hey mark c sorry i'm early what do you mean welcome in i was early actually i started half an hour early today because uh i have been finding because on work days i am uh, I have a lot of meetings that align with folks that are a few hours uh, <laughs> to the east of me that I have lunch earlier than I'm used to when I wasn't on such a schedule. So on Sundays, I have been finding myself quite hungry by the end of the stream and ending the stream early. So I have been thinking about and I guess sort of testing the waters by starting the stream a little early uh, today. Now, here's a question. So we're attempting to parse from RFC 2822, right? So what is, what is the, uh, <laughs> the um, retry after header? I think I have a tab where I was looking at that, right? Retry after, HTTP date. See the date header for more details? Yep. Date header. Yeah, yeah. Um, what is what is actually the RFC that covers the format of this date? You you think this is a lot of tabs? <laughs> You've seen nothing. Nothing. So RFC 9110, yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking as well, Brainless. <laughs> I have like six different browser windows and they all have at least as many tabs, if not more. I mean, to be fair, uh, that that's also somewhat true of, on this computer too. Yeah, 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 it's all of us. <laughs> Yep. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So what is what is what is the definition of? It has the same semantics. The field values and HTTP date as defined in section five six seven. Okay. The preferred format is a fixed length and single zone subset of the date and time specification used by Internet Message Format RFC. 5322. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. So, what I was hoping it would say is that this is a RFC 2822 date. What is RFC 2822? Uh, it's internet, internet message format. Uh. Let's see, requirements notation. Uh, we don't want that. Uh, syntax, body, header fields. Obsolete syntax, field definitions. The origination date field. Yeah, date time.
Date, time, specification. Uh -huh, it's recommended single space, yada, yada, yada. Okay, so let's compare this with the thing that I no longer have open. Let's just duplicate the tab. <laughs> Go back to here. Okay, so retry after says that it should match date. Uh, hmm. Actually, let's go back to here. Is there a link to, there we go, field retry after. Server send the retry after header to indicate how long this user agent should ought to wait before making a follow-up request. Uh, so it can either be delay seconds or an HTTP date. Okay. So please define an HTTP date, there we go. Uh, yeah, of the internet message format, RFC 5322. That's interesting because isn't this a 2822? Uh, okay, RFC 5322. Obsolete's 2822, okay, okay. So this makes sense. So this is the replacement for 2822. I don't suppose 5322 is also a method. <laughs> what what parse from methods do we have? We have 3339, STR, and our, okay, we'll do that and maybe it'll work. Oh boy, okay, so we've spent 45 minutes implementing upload status. What do you mean it's never used? It's used right, oh right, because upload status is never used. Uh, anyway, so upload status is a function that checks the stat, see the status of our upload. So like the upload failed, or we think it failed, or the connection dropped or something, and we're trying to figure out did it succeed? Did it fail? Should we give up? Should we retry? Um, and so we have um, maybe, a, well, we have an enum called upload status that we're using to figure that out, to, to represent the uh, information that we need. Uh, and we have another function that we implemented in the first hour of the stream called upload enter. Upload enter is what's actually responsible for sending the bytes of the video file we're uploading to YouTube. Uh, and we currently are just directly using that inside of our handler for our endpoint to trigger the upload, upload video handler. This is where we actually have access to like the access token and the application state um, and details of like the metadata we wanna use for the, the upload all of that stuff. Um, and we are doing another bit that could also probably be, probably be extracted into a, a function, which is like uploading all the metadata and creating the, the placeholder video um, record in YouTube. Um, and I have a lot of stuff hard coded here that I'll probably make it configurable at some point. It's just suitable for my use case right now. Um, and so we're handling like did any of that succeed? Did that fail? And we're right now we're just calling directly upload enter. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this code and um, we're gonna get rid of that to do. And instead I'm gonna create a new function and it's gonna be called upload. Async function upload. And uh, it's gonna do some stuff, but ultimately it's gonna call upload enter. Um, and we're gonna essentially do a loop here of some kind. Um, we're gonna do something here. So there's a couple different ways we could do this, right? So uh, recursion, we could recurse over uh, something like ourselves, maybe. We could, probably the easiest thing to do is like, okay, so we know that there's a start byte where we're gonna start from. 
And we know that for the other call to status, we'll need to know a number of attempts. So we can just have some mutable state here of like, um, well, we're not gonna worry about path. We're gonna add, actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to upload enter. I'm gonna copy the arguments here. And we're gonna make the same, same parameters except um, start byte. Does it need to be passed in? That's the part that we're gonna keep track of internally. Uh, we can also instrument this function for tracing purposes. So we're gonna have a uh, let mute um, attempts. Attempt zero. And uh, we're also gonna, yeah, no. Uh, let mute um, start byte. So we started at the beginning and we've made no attempts yet, right? And then Copilot suggests, hey, you could loop and then call upload enter. And then based on what happens, do a thing, right? So if we have a permanent failure, we break. If we uh, have a success, we also break. If we have a temporary failure, we Call upload status. I think this this looks kind of good. Uh, so I'm just gonna take all of this, except it's not gonna be a break. What we're gonna do, um, we want to return something that indicates success or failure. Uh, a result is a perfectly valid way of doing that, right? So we can do a result, but it's just gonna be it's gonna be either a unit, like we we don't need any information if it's a success, like it just worked, we're done. Um, if it's a failure, then we might also not want anything, like internally everything is gonna be logging what happened. We might want to return a string back to the user, like so. Uh, so we're gonna get rid of this and then what we're gonna do I could save and it's gonna tell me what's wrong but I already know that what we want to do here is probably I mean we could just break if this is if it's a success no we, no we can't right because this needs to return a result so we need to be like um, uh, we could like we could say that if we get to the end here then we're okay Right, then we only need to handle the permanent error case. In the case of a permanent error, right, we're gonna return, return, return yeah, return uh, error. Sure. Uh, the, the error message is gonna be kind of boring and maybe that's why we don't really need to return an error message. This is gonna be like, it failed. But maybe there could be something inf like informative to tell the user that we would want to expose, and that could serve that purpose. Um, so if we fail to get the upload status, we also want to return. So there we go, there's, there's something that distinguishes that will be like, okay, we failed to find out if the upload <laughs> succeeded or not, um, which is, I guess that tells me something, like if I click the button and then in the task queue, I see that the job failed because it failed to get the upload status. It's like, okay, maybe YouTube's API is broken or something is wrong. Um, and now I have an incomplete upload that I have to go deal with uh, in YouTube. I guess that's also true in this case as well, maybe. Anyway, uh, so if, if we have a success, we just break out of the loop. If we have a success after doing upload status, we also break out of the loop. If we get a temporary failure, we get the new start byte and the wait time. We increment attempts, we update start byte, and we sleep that amount of time. And uh, we don't break, right? So the loop continues. And that's where we execute upload enter again. Uh, 
Now, when we call upload status, if we get a permanent failure, then we just fail, right? So this is this is where we're really looping. So it's it's only when we descend and we get to here that we actually do repeat. In all the other cases of success or failure, we bail out one way or the other. So that should work. <laughs> should. Uh, and then what we want to do is we want to upload our handler method to uh, to actually use that, right? So we'll do something like match upload, sure, sure. Uh, and then what we could do is just like take this and put this inside of the OK branch, right? So if uploads OK, then we return this. And if upload is error, then we return error and it doesn't like it. Okay, all oh, right, because we need to await. It's an async function. There you go. All right, and as long as we don't have that semicolon there, then this expression becomes the return value for the function upload video handler. And so we will return, um, yeah, into response. So we return this response with a 200 status and this JSON body, or with a 500 status code and this JSON body. And that's it. Some warnings. Yeah, we're not using these methods yet. We should probably look at that at some point. So we added all this code <laughs> in the last two hours. Uh, let's actually build it. And this might actually work. Um, we should be able to see. I should still have a val valid uh, refresh token from my previous experiments over this last week. So we should be able to um, call the API, uh, our API for this YouTube upload API and uh, see it work. And maybe I can do this without leaking credentials. <laughs> uh, YouTube start upload task. Is this the right thing? I think so. Except we need to give it a real file. I have a real file. Let's see here. I have a, I have a window somewhere that has YouTube stuff in it. There we go. Uh, let's see. Do I have draft videos? I want to make sure this video is not already there. It is not. Excellent. So let me get the, uh, I mean, we're still waiting for the build to happen. So I don't know if that's going to happen before we have to take a break. But I'm going to go see if I can hunt down this video from the renders folder. There we go. So this is the video that I want to upload. PAL4-1.mp4. Three point nine one gigabytes. So this is something I rendered out in DaVinci Resolve based on stuff exported. Uh, here we go. So um, I'm just gonna call it Test Video One for now. <laughs> Keep track of things, and um, yeah. So this should work. Once, uh, once the services are all updated, we can call this this API. So this is hitting, like this is all inside of my collection. So this is hitting the uh, the local services. I think I can close that, right? And then we can, um, can we see from here? what the request would look like. In Postman, you can do that, right? You can see, like, generate a thing, but I guess not here. Okay, well, anyway. Waiting for services to update.
Are we just building? Oh yeah, there's probably been other changes as well because I've been hopping around between different branches working on a few different pull requests over the last week. So I don't know which <laughs> version of the code everything was built uh, with. So that's probably why we have a few different things that are uh, being uh, rebuilt. So what I expect though is, yeah, that's not all. Um, so this API call, ooh, actually, what is this API call to? Oh, we, we didn't fill this in, okay. Um, so this is gonna call the container. It's gonna call the YouTube API service and it's going to queue a task and then the task worker will call back to the YouTube API upload or YouTube upload API service to actually do the upload. Um, so this will return immediately after queuing a task at 202 accepted. Um, we can probably look in Redis to see the task or I can pull over the UI. And we have many tasks. Can I refresh this? Uh, 93, this is not sorted, but I think 93 is the biggest number. So that might be it, and maybe it's done then. In which case, if I go over to YouTube, Creator Studio, nope, it's not there. <laughs> well, let's see. Uh, debugging time? Perhaps. Why don't I see Docker desktop in my uh, in my tray? <sighs> All right, I'm gonna move that off to a different desktop because I am not completely confident that I have <laughs> gotten all the things that could leak credentials. Okay, I see an error. Um. I do see a thing where it says redacted. Let me look through. Okay. Okay, so it looks like, so one, it looks like I am not linking, leaking credentials into the logs anymore. Yeah, access token is redacted. Response. Main path query headers invalid token. Uh, right, so we're probably, I probably need to log in again. That can't be helped. All right. I'm not too worried about IRL things getting out there. <laughs> Stream without leaking secrets. Uh, I think honestly, my uh, like Saban as a name is way more specific than my real name. So I'm not worried about that. I've decided. All right, so we're gonna try again. All right, and then maybe this will actually work. <laughs> Uh, let's see, upload video handler. Some stuff ha did happen. Do I see it in the 
Studio. Oh yeah, I see a thing. Now, this is not uh, definitive yet, because when you first upload a video to YouTube, I don't know if anyone here has done that, um, we see pending and we see, there's the title of the video, test video one. Um, and we see some details. Processing will begin shortly. So I don't know if it actually has the content of the video yet, but this is kind of normal. You see the license is set correctly, embedding is set correctly, publish is turned off, uh, gaming category is set. So all of that looks right, but we won't see like thumbnail and this stuff until it makes a little bit of progress in ingesting the video. Uh, but hopefully, we did actually, let's see, upload video handler, take, expiration, reuse idle. So looking at the logs here, uh, nope. <laughs> All right, I gotta go take a break, but I'll be back in a few minutes. And uh, I think it's time to work on the UI, right? So having the UI uh, bulk upload videos or triggering triggering the bulk upload API. So I'll be back in just a few with some more. 